episode number 413. When I open my mouth or they read my work, it causes a disruption of these beliefs that they hold about short people, about black people, about thin people, about whatever. And I think that's great that I'm wrapped up in this body that allows me to dispel myths and stereotypes each and every day. Welcome to the Be Real Show with Travis Too Tall and Hop, where we talk about life, dreams, social media, and business. Well, hello and welcome to the Be Real Show with Travis Too Tall and Huff. Folks, you know your boy is fired up, ready to bring you a little fuego in your days, nights, weekends, or whenever you are listening to the show today. But after this show, I think you're going to want to do more good work in this life, in this world. Uh, a gentleman that has, has been giving his soul and passion and energy, not only to the, to the world, to the universe, but explicitly to you know the, the, the higher education and through his books and authored and articles, which we're going to get into um, to the world, really. Uh, let's just be real. And, and, and nominated uh, one of the country's top diversity scholars, Dr. Terrell Strayhorn. Doctor, are you ready to be real? I am so ready to be real. Hello, Travis. It's good to be with you. It is my pleasure, dude. And you are um, uh, been nominated one of the most prolific and influential contemporary scholars in the field of higher education, urban education, and academic diversity. And as we know, folks, we need this more and more continually um, as we are all becoming basically, you know, a more educated society, a more um, a conscious society. I believe, I truly believe that but there's always going to be challenges along the way and the, along the journey, and it's never going to be easy. But before we get into the, the, the day and talking about the books and things like that, were you always interested and fascinated with education? You know, Travis, I was. I mean, not maybe not initially. I'm sure like most kids, I wanted to be um, you know, rich and famous through probably some athletic um, you know, pursuit. However, um, in my adult life, since I stand at five six, I weigh 125 pounds. I learned very early on that most sports were probably not going to be um, the the best site for me to display my strength. But right. um, in some jests, you know, I did realize I, I, we didn't have the language for it when I was raising uh, when I was uh, coming up. But you know, in school, um, I was often picked on for you know, preferring to stay inside versus being outside. I wanted to just, mm. to, to, you know, work on math and science, not climb a tree. Right. And so um, my bullies helped me realize that my strongest muscles actually were in my mind, mm. that my um, sort of gifts and talents, although I try to, you know, do things musically, and I'm a singer and I play the piano. Let's go. Um, I love that. Most of my gifts are intellectual. And so I think very early on, I realized that's my lane. Stay in it. Master those muscles. Right. Um, I always tell, you know, students that every girlfriend I ever had, I got her first by doing her homework. Mm. Um, love came later. So, yeah, I think that pretty soon after elementary school, I realized that education was going to be my secret power. And the, and the biggest thing now, and I always say this now, is the, the landscape of education has completely transformed. I mean, as far as many places to learn, no excuses really to not learn, right? Like if you have a question about something, you can Google it, you can go learn on YouTube, you can go on universities online, and you can and you can self learn now more. I feel like than ever. I do it all the time. I knew I do it in my recently just did it in my sports car business. Spent a lot of time processing photos and putting them on eBay. And I said, "There's got to be an easier way." Started doing some YouTube YouTube research. Next thing I know, hey, there's a scanner. There's a software. And boom, we're here now. You can just scan and it gets posted to eBay. It saves me hundreds of hours in a week, in a month, in a year uh, of my life. And I get back to spend with my time with my family, etc because I just did a little self-education, a little learning, because I always say, you know, we're in a, a, a day now that if you don't do that, you know, you're going to get swooped by the person that, that is doing that, you know, and you're going to spend your time in the slow lane instead of maybe possibly learning that, hey, there is software out there. Hey, there is a little piece of uh, equipment that was $400 that has easily been recouped in the business because, you know, you can do that. And now the time it takes to do it is just like infinitely different. And so the biggest thing I always say, just as a business owner, is if you're not doing that, you're going to be literally out of business. We, we, we see it time and time again, Blockbuster, Sears, you know, some of the greatest business in the, the past hundreds of years 
are fighting to stay alive. So obviously Blockbuster is gone, but I think they have one store left, actually. One store, one location left. Um, the point is these businesses have been completely been transformed, um, not in the greatest way, right? So I always think of that too, but then also for those that are in the education space, those that are trying to get jobs, you got to constantly uh, be transforming and learning and educating. And because when you get out of school, it's always going to be evolving and changing, right? Absolutely. I mean, education, teaching and learning is ubiquitous. It's everywhere. So, you know, as you said, you can Google it. There's another person, um, S-I-R-I. I don't want to say her name because she always answers when I call it out in my house because she's everywhere. But you, know, you can ask these artificial intelligence right. questions and you have information. So for those of us who are in education, much like you said, Blockbuster, another one, Redbox, you know, and there are lots of companies. And what I'm doing now is I've been studying sense of belonging for some time. I'm looking at sense of belonging in business spaces, the sense of belonging at work. Mm. And what is it that companies are doing, especially in this post-pandemic, endemic, whatever era we're in, right. what are they doing to really foster inclusive spaces where people feel like they matter, they belong at work? Well, one of the things we're learning is that there is this disruptive transformation that's happening, that the world is changing, people's expectations are changing, and the companies that will be there, both in business as well as in education, are those that will pause and say, wait a minute, how can we keep up? How can we transform our business? If people, you know, if most folks would take a degree from Siri or Google at this point. And so colleges and universities, I was provost and uh, senior vice president for academic affairs at Virginia Union University. And one of the things we were doing there at one of the nation's historically black colleges is really trying to figure out how do we um, take our traditional classroom and laboratory environment that is great, it served the purpose for, and there are people who still want that experience. Absolutely. But there are a lot more people who will never come to Richmond who want the credential, they're upskilling, they need certificates and yes. badges and yes. um, you know webinars and online courses. So how do we quickly pivot, build the technology infrastructure, prepare our instructors or hire them from somewhere else, right? Um, to come and deliver those high quality educational opportunities to the new markets that we could tap into. And Absolutely. we were able to do some of that, but I think part of it is about long-term planning and sustainability. Those colleges and universities that wanna stay open are the ones that will do that. Those who don't, now, unless you have some sweet niche, like if you are you know, in the hair industry and you train cosmetologists and right. cosmetologists are still meeting you at your technical school, then great. But otherwise you're gonna to have to transform and change. Yeah. And, and and that goes into many different industries. Talk about life. Even when you get the degree, folks, it's just a piece of paper. Now, then you got to get into the sales role. You got to go sell yourself. People always forget. I always tell them uh, at the college or high school level, how many people want to be in sales? And, you know, very few people raise their hand because let's be real. Not really. No one wants to be claimed sales. But then I always remind them that everybody's in sales, like everybody's selling everybody thing. You don't you're in a relationship, you're selling yourself to get a girlfriend or keep the girlfriend uh, or, or boyfriend, et cetera. Or in, in life, you have to sell yourself on that piece of paper on the job because there's going to be competitors. Usually it's not usually just you as the number one candidate. Um, sometimes you're blessed to have you as just a, the, the, the rock star candidate that just comes in and takes the show. But most of the time they have to interview multiple people. So the bottom line is, even when you get the degree, you still have to sell yourself. And I always never remind people that, that uh, never forget to remind them that, you know, we're all in sales in different ways, right? We're not the used car salesman, the, you know, the sleazebag sales that you think of first off. Really sales a lot of times is, is really listening to folks, figuring out what they really need and how if you are in that service or tool or technology or whatever it is that you can alleviate their time energy, money, et cetera. And then if it's, if it's a good fit, you work out, if not, you move on, you know, and uh, Absolutely. It's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. And uh, here you go. Here you go. But the most important thing that I found about, about life and business is that if you, if you really adapt, if you evolve, if you move, if you move and you don't forget that we're not stagnant, the people that I know that stay stagnant in life that literally are like they're sitting there using the same uh, tools and technologies of, uh, of 2020, of uh, 2000, let's just say. And we're now 2022, 22 late, years later. It doesn't matter what degree you have. Now, you are insulated maybe in certain jobs, like you said, certain careers. 
you know, you know, they're, they're insulated because you have to have them. A dentist I'm thinking about, you know, we all got dentist work. Hey, you got dentist work, but you can just imagine the dental service of 20 years ago to now has to have evolved. And yeah. the new practitioners of dentists are doing completely different things than the guy 20 years ago. And if he's not staying up to them, they're going to take his customers, you know, um, yeah. bottom line, or they're going to retire and he takes over the practice and just, we all used to do technology. But then that gets me into the hard work of taking your thoughts, your energy, your passion, just like we're doing today on the Be Real Show, folks, just like we're doing today on the Be Real Show, and how you take that and put it in a book, an article, the time it takes to do that, my dude. What inspires you to write? What inspires you to, to move and write? Because that takes a lot of work, too, dude. Yeah. The, you know, I was going to say the um, point you made about story the power of story and telling a story. And then as, even in the context of what we've been talking about, how um, society changes over time, technology advances over time. Right. You know, sometimes the human needs change over time. But, you know, as an educator, I often, an educator and an administrator, I often thought, you know, what are the core skills and abilities that a learned person or a person must have mm -hmm. in order to, um, you know, make a contribution to society, to live their best life, to achieve the goals they set for themselves. And some of these are very, very fundam fundamental. Like, for instance, the ability to, whether you were a dentist, as you said, you know, 50 years ago or a dentist today, the ability to um, listen to mm -hmm. a client or a patient, to um, problem identify or identify a problem. That is, whether you're in the medical field or you're in, um, you know, counseling or theology. The ability to um, listen, to assess a situation, to identify a problem, to then explore. We were just talking about it earlier. Yeah, I don't know if it's in a book, Google, Siri, but to um, access information, to identify and explore plausible solutions that you mm. might try, regardless of your industry, right. and to then deliver that solution in a way that is empathetic. It responds to the need of the person. Um, it is socially responsible, so you're not trying to destroy people in the process, right. and that you're only, ultimately able to assess whether or not it was successful. What I just outlined transports to any field, discipline, full-time, part-time job, C-suite, or you know, blue collar. Right. So I think when we start thinking about what are those core mechanics and skills that students need, that has implications for then what we would teach mm. um, in the curriculum, the kinds of experiences that they would have in college in K-12. Right. Well, I think if nothing else, I see connections um, between those core fundamental skills and these big problems that we're trying to address in society. Everyone can't see those all the time. Right. So sometimes when you can see, I tell people all the time, you're responsible for what you see. So if I can see something that my fellow citizens and friends and colleagues can't see, I feel a responsibility to help them see it. The only way I can communicate these ideas and the connections, it takes a little space, is through journal articles and blogs and keynote lectures and books. And so as I see myself as a communicator who has a message. The message is around these connections that will help us understand how education really gives rise to addressing the problems that we have in society. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, and we got a whole lot of problems in society, but we got a whole lot of need for education. And so that's my motivation is I think that education is part of the solution. I see that the role that it plays and I get excited thinking about changing the world mm -hmm. by changing education. Right. I always say too, they got to, they got to weave in courses about money in the, in the schools, you know, like, you, you know, you have finance classes, they teach you a little bit. And that's for the business students, you know, but a lot of the students in, in, in class don't know, hey, let's manage a checkbook or, you know, let's manage some finances or like, how do you, when you schedule a loan and you get a car loan, like, this is what your insurance is going to be. This is what your gas is going to be. And kind of like, like putting that out together, like what budgeting and stuff is. Um, but I think that's missing too, because in the education system as well, because, hey, give you a lot of money. Doesn't matter what your career, doesn't matter what your services, you don't know how to manage it. Doesn't matter what race, ethnicity, income level, whatever, but you get some money, baby. You know what happens. You know, this is what you were saying earlier. The challenge in education, especially higher education, is that um, it's higher education in the U.S. Right. Is that higher education in the U.S. is now comprised of 4,300 colleges and universities that educate about 
21 million students. It's a huge, massive enterprise. By the way, you know, I have a friend who um, lives in the Gambia. The Gambia only has one university. So for comparison, there are some wow. countries in the world that have one. We've wow. got over 4,000. All right, so we got this massive system that provides access to a lot of different people. Now, in this country, 1636, founding of Harvard College was when higher education was sort of born. Right. It was born and birthed to educate the sons of wealthy white folk. Well, there are a whole lot of people in higher education now who are not the sons, Absolutely. who are not sons at all, but they're certainly not the sons of wealthy white folk who want to go on to two occupations. That is how Harvard was founded to train politicians, mm -hmm. what they would have called statesmen, mm -hmm. and to train clergy leaders. But now we've got you know, podcast hosts like Everything. the amazing Travis Huff. Let's go! Doctors, doctors, dentists, lawyers, right. you know, um, Uber drivers. And Absolutely. so you got all these people who come to this system. And all we've done over the course of time really is open the door and say, hey, more can come in. But mm. we haven't changed the system itself right. to really address the needs. So to your point, Travis, you know, we have welcomed the higher education now. Students who are low income or students tell me in my um, research studies, what about me? I'm no income. I got no money. No money. We yeah, have yeah, students yeah. in college who have low income, right. no income, come from very disadvantaged backgrounds Absolutely. who you know, when they get their financial aid refund check, that is the most amount of money ever they have seen. ever held yeah. in their hand in their right. life. And so too is true for their parents. But yet we expect them to be financially responsible. Well, they're not going to know what that means and how yeah. to do that without us, the system changing to say, hey, we, we understand this. We see you. We right. know you're here. So we're going to provide some financial literacy. And there are yeah. lots of ways that this is being done across the country. That's awesome. Yeah, I always thought that. I mean, and that that... And many, like you said, there's always many things you can focus on or look at that we have so many problems. I would say, don't worry as much about the problems, folks. Just worry about what you're doing each day in your life to make a, the world a little bit better. A little bit. I would say I record a podcast. I'm a great dad. I spent my whole life with my kids. I didn't get that experience when I was a kid. I hope that impacts generations of my family. I don't know if it will or not. You know, it's a long-term bet. But the most important thing is, the sacrifice leads to many things down the road, but it's it's that little, little bit that you're doing for yourself, if you want to call it, but it's for the greater good. Whether you're publishing a, a blog, doing a YouTube video, writing something, helping a friend, et cetera, whatever that is, there can be many things you do in life. But if you're doing more of that, at least a little bit every day, instead of worried about all the problems in the world, I think that helps bet more than worried about all the problems in the world and not doing anything. You know what I mean? And it's like, because yeah. then you're just saying, oh, we need to all do this. Oh, no shit. We all need. I wish the thing in the Texas where they got the all these people that, you know, were in the back of a semi truck. I mean, there's so many things you can look at. You're like, oh, my God, I wish these kids didn't have to have that happen to them at school. And the cops didn't even do nothing to these last recent situation with the shooting stuff. For hours, the parents were trying to get inside the school and the guys wouldn't even go inside. It scared cops. The point is, there's so many things to look at. You could just get. So you could be handcuffed and you could be frozen in life, right? Where it's like, no, we're going to record the show. No, we're going to go do the splash pad today with the family. And we're going to sacrifice a little bit of work to hang out and be, make some memories with the kids. Because those little bits of things, I believe, make the world better instead of just focusing on the negative and not doing shit about the positive, not doing anything, not recording anything, Absolutely. not doing anything. And that's just how I look at it. Now, everyone's different. So, but I, I, I just appreciate well, I your would echo energy. That. So for anybody yeah. in the listening audiences, I'm with Travis. I think, you know, I tell my students and audiences all the time that the world has, is full of problems, but every problem is not yours to solve. Mm -hmm. So it's exactly what you said when you and you're really fortunate in fact i would say and i do write about purpose purpose to me and passion is when your gifts and talents sort of rise up to mm. meet and address some problem in society it won't happen every day it right. won't be every problem listen i write about belonging mm. and about education and um but i've met a lot of people especially in this pandemic who are walking around wondering, do they belong here? Do they matter? Did their life matter? Are they making a, if they were gone tomorrow, would anybody right. miss them? Right. Um, and when they get into college, like, is this institution set up to support people like myself to be successful? Um, and what I've learned is a secret. And that is that if we don't address that issue, 
If they just sit there and linger with those thoughts that are reinforced um, with the absence of diverse faculty, the absence of an integrated curriculum, the absence of financial supports, if they're left to think about that, it will erode their confidence. It will mm. cause them not to go to class. It will re- diminish and reduce their retention and they'll drop out. Right. So as an educator and administrator who believes in the power of education, I write about belonging to a firm for them. And for anybody in your listening audience, one, that you do matter. Two, I don't care who you are. You could be first generation, second generation, a single mom living in Chicago or a single dad living in Washington state, a grandma who decided to go back to school that higher education is for you. Now, not every institution is for everyone. So it is a matter of identifying, knowing who you are and identifying the institution that provides the supports that you need. But once you get there to then understand that, you know, those supports and services are there to help you develop this feeling that I talk about called belonging, that Mm. you matter to uh, people and to the institution. And that um, resolving that question frees up bandwidth for you to throw yourself into your classes and to um, ace the exam and to run for a campus office and to study abroad and do all of the things that we know really matter for student success. Right. And I would say the biggest thing too about college and anything, once that you get to the higher education level, beyond the classes and the tests and the learning, the friendships you build, that you're sitting with your buddies that you're in your fraternity with. Uh, I was in a co-ed marketing fraternity, so it was co-ed. We were working on marketing projects. It wasn't actually like partying and popping bottles. And we did a little fun things like that, but not too crazy like that. It, um, some of those are some of my best friends still today. In fact, I'm going to go hang out with one of him, watching his family grow. He's seeing my family grow. And I always remind people that college also is like, it's the people you're with, too. Like, I mean, the teachers, the professors you're around um, that I still have friendships with, as well as the people that you sit with in those classes that you still have friendships with. Um, maybe it's not the strongest friendships. Maybe it is. In some cases, for me, it was very, very strong connections and friendships that still last many, many years after college. And so um, uh, we do business together, many different things. And so it, it's just interesting. You, you uh, I always remind the kids, don't forget some of the people you're sitting around. Some could be some of your better buddies down the road. You don't, you don't know it today, but you'll be surprised. There are people maybe you're working with, coworkers, same industry, maybe competitors, whatever. But even competitors get along at some point. So uh now my man so go ahead go ahead you've heard the story of this ride sharing app i won't say the name but you know it's exactly your point that you know at some point someone is trying to get i think the story goes they're trying to get to a movie and they're in some very busy city they don't think they're gonna make the time for the movie so anyway they're like man it'd be so cool if i could pull up my phone, press a button and call a car to come pick me up and take me to the movies. So a buddy who is with him is like, that's the craziest thing in the world. Nobody's going to get in the car with a perfect stranger. But he holds on to this idea and he goes home and he thinks about it. And as he's thinking about it, he starts testing with people like, well, yeah, I mean, I might try it. It turns out actually a billion people will do this. Right. But so he comes up with the idea, but he realizes that in order to enact it and make it a ride sharing app on a phone, he needs to have an uh, app developer. He's got to have a programmer. He's got to have a market. None of the skills he has, but he remembers people he went to college with. It wasn't his talent, but it's their talent. So he calls up, these are his words, not mine, uh, folks in the audience, but he calls up what he called the nerd who knew how to um, create mobile apps. And he's like, look, I got this idea. And the guy does it. And then he calls up some woman who's a marketer. So he brings together the team that gives birth to this very, very successful app because of those relationships that he started in college. So for those who are in college, pay attention to who's sitting next to you. Get those exactly. names and numbers in their social media because you never know when you'll need them. Yeah, and they might do things for you for a lot better deal than you would if you walked into an, a, 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 an app firm too. Let's just be real. Uh, and hey, maybe maybe you know at the end of the day, they could be partners and you make money together. You know, So I love that idea. Now, my man, we're about to take you into our top 10. Are you ready? I love that story, though, dude. I absolutely love that story about the collaboration, baby. Um, Are you ready, my man? I'm ready. Let's go. Apple or Android? Apple. Apple, Netflix or YouTube? YouTube. YouTube, Instagram or Facebook? Instagram. Instagram. You want to give your IG a shout out? Yes. Um, so my Instagram and everything is TL Strayhorn on all things social media. Thanks Let's for that. Let's go. TL Strayhorn, baby. Let's go. We ready. We ready. Chicken or steak if you're thinking about a good meal? Lord, I'm vegan. Neither. Vegan, baby. What kind, what's your favorite <laughs> vegetable meal? What's your, I love vegetables. 
Really? Uh, so I'm just oh, yeah. crazy about anything cauliflower. Cauliflower. I love cauliflower. That's a very, they make a lot of very good, uh, cool, like cauliflower rices and things like that nowadays too. Like and they have Costco. buffalo cauliflower now. So shout buffalo out to anybody who does buffalo cauliflower. Oh, it's like buffalo chicken-ish. Really? Oh, that sounds mm-hmm. interesting. Because I we get the um, the cauliflower rice at Costco. It's very good. I mean, it keeps it a little less carbs. You know what I mean? A little less carbs. And we can do a little less carbs. Plus, it's healthy. It's healthy. It is healthy, and it tastes very good. Um, uh, so, so we're going cauliflower. I like that cauliflower steak. We're getting sitting down. Uh, laptop or smartphone? <laughs> if you had to hit out of the door right now. With, with laptop or smartphone? Um, head out the door. La- uh, smartphone. Smartphone. Spotify or Pandora. Spotify. Spotify, movies or video games? Movies. Movies, reading books or listening to books? Reading. Reading books. Uh, if you're thinking about diversifying portfolio. Maybe writing books. <laughs> writing books, baby, let's go. I even like that better. Writing books. So my man is writing some books, articles, thousands of uh, uh, pieces of content my dude has written in his lifetime. Uh, stocks or real estate, if you're thinking about diversifying, diversifying the portfolio. Stocks. Okay, go pee pee. Okay, we'll take a break here. Hold on one second. One second. Go pee pee. Did you go? Go ahead. Go pee pee on the little toilet. I gotta finish it. I gotta finish the show real quick. And I'll be right there. Okay. Oh no, I need your help. We're ready to go, baby. She's gotta go pee pee. We're, we're doing potty training too. All right, we're back. We're back. We're back. Are you, do you need to go help her? No, no, no. We're good right now. We're gonna we're gonna oh. we're gonna wrap the show in about five minutes. So we're we're good. Okay. Um, she's just let me know, which I appreciate. All right, we're cool. All right. When you're thinking about vacations, which one do you want to choose? Oceans or lakes? Ocean. Ocean. Virginia Beach, Virginia, originally. Let's go. Yep, yep. Uh, and when you're waking up in your morning, getting ready, pumped, energized for the day, why do you love being you? Because, um, that's a good question. Wait, when I get up in the morning? When you're getting up in the morning, you're pumped, energized, you're brushing your teeth, getting ready, dialed in. Why do you love being you? You know, I feel very fortunate to do the kind of work I do that each and every day I get up, I get to um, use information, knowledge, and the gift of teaching to equip other people, strengthen them for their goals in life, whether it's teaching uh, undergrad, um, how to, you know, really navigate the college environment or graduate student about their dissertation or, you know, my grandmother was living, I would teach her about how to use her computer. That's just a real um, special opportunity to be able to help people become their best selves. Dude, and the biggest thing I always say about teachers is they're like the greatest coaches. They are like the greatest, you know, the coaches prepare our athletes, but the teachers are the ones that are preparing the students, the future workforce, the future leaders, the future you know, innovators, if you want to call it, that I believe make the world better. We always solve the problems that we have today through our own ingenuity and our own innovations and technology that we create. Uh, and obviously on the negative side too, we can obviously look at the negatives too, but a lot of it is for the better. Like look at healthcare, like healthcare is getting better. They say every 10 years we extend health, our health expands 20 years. So every 10 yeah, years, right. Our life expands 20 years. So that means every 20 years, our life expands 40 years. Like that's crazy when you really think about it. For that's my little crazy. youngins, they're like basically going to grow up, basically living to 100, most of them, as long as they obviously have, you know, a, a somewhat healthy life, uh, et cetera. And we know, obviously, we can't choose that. We can't pick our battles. That's why I always try to stay present in the moment, in the day, because we never know when our time but is. But to your question, your question is why do, when I wake up, what am I glad about being me? And I just say that's it. I mean, the other thing is I, for the kind of work I do fighting against, you know, um, when I say fighting, I don't mean with my fitness, of course, right. fighting with my work against um, bias and discrimination and stereotypes. That's why I appreciate this camera is you probably can't tell I'm, I'm a little dude, but Let's go. People meet me, they always think like I'm a kid or they think I'm significantly younger. But when I open my mouth or they read my work, it's like, it causes a disruption of this, these beliefs that they hold about short people, about black people, about thin people, about whatever. And I think that's great that I'm wrapped up in this body that allows me to dispel myths and stereotypes each and every day. And the most important thing is that you're waking up every single day, inspired passion. I can feel your soul, feel your energy. And uh, I'm ready to do some jumping jacks with you, my dude. Let's go. (laughs) Do you think you'll ever retire from educating? 
Absolutely. Cannot wait. One day he's ready. I'll hit, we're hitting beach live, baby. We're going, we're going beach to That's beach. Right. Um, no, no, you... no. When I retire, I hope to open a coffee shop. That's one oh, of my wow. big dreams is That'll be own fun. my own coffee shop and then play live music. So I play the piano, the guitar, and I sing. So you can That's do that live too. That'd be fun. Like a coffee, like a coffee uh, musical experience. Hey, that, that's, there's always a niche for everything. I think that's a very unique niche to have a coffee uh, spot that lets uh, local artists play their music, lets them perform. I know as an artist myself as well, what I did for many years, I did popular hip hop, um, like kind of clean LMFAO, if you want to call it style. Um, Are you no, cu no cussing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too tall. If wow. you look it up, we got lots of views on the YouTube, but at some point I had to choose Instead of going and hitting the Hollywood and doing shows there and 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 kind of running the the gambit of doing shows, um, was for me was I chose family, you know, for me because I knew that at that point that's something I always wanted, and I always thought I could still keep recording. I still hope to keep recording because you can distribute on your own now. Um, but I think it's so important. But I love that having a coffee shop, local community vibes. Um, right now, is there a skill you're trying to master? Something you're trying to get better at? Yes, cooking. Hey, there um, we go. I'm very, very bad at it. What did you say? I said, there you go. I love that. Yeah. Trying to learn, and especially since I'm vegan. And so it's not just cooking, it's learning how to cook with a vegan diet. Um, and you know, right now for one. So this is my uh, my challenge. I'm not oh. getting very far with it, but I'm still learning. And actually, I should share this too. I'm also in a master's program, I'm getting a master's in psychology. Wow. I know I should be done, but I'm really interested in building out on this work on belonging. And I realized that to do it the way I want to do it, I need one time to read and explore. That's what a program does. But then, you know, I say I'm a lifelong learner. So here's my opportunity. So I will graduate at the end of this year. Dude, in. that is yeah. awesome. Never stop, baby. Let's go. Never stop. That's a right. Great, uh, a great wise uh, investor, Charlie Munger, who's part of Warren Buffett with Berkshire Hathaway, always says a life, a great life is a life full of learning. And I always remember that because he's, he's a lawyer. He was a past lawyer. He created Berkshire Hathaway, which is a an incredible company, incredible story. Basically, this, the, the, the counterpart to, to Warren Buffett and, and Berkshire Hathaway. Um, but he always says that. And that always reminds me, just never stop learning, never pick up a book. And I was like interviewing people that I never expected to interview after almost 420 shows now. It's incredible what I've learned. I appreciate different souls every day. But I always get it really pumped and energized for my shows because I get to meet someone I've never met before, feel the vibe, create magic on the on the podcast. And then a lot of times from there on, we get to push out to the world and it lives forever. You know, and it's just yeah. an incredible thing that I always love uh, because it, it, for me, I'm always like uh, one of those people that just likes to record it and get it out there as much as fast as possible. Um, less editing. I know I'm going to make some mistakes, folks. A um, couple of last questions for you, my dude, before we wrap. If you could sit down and chop it up to a cauliflower steak dinner with anyone in the world, who would you want to sit down with? Um, oh, gosh. Right now, I would – I mean, I've always wanted to sit down and talk to President Obama, mm. the President Obama. Um, but right now, you know, I would say that if I could sit down and have cauliflower, no steak, they could have steak, um, dinner with anyone – I would love to talk to Pharrell Williams. Ooh, I love Pharrell. Dude. He's about my age. -ish. Right. You guys got the same we're vibe. The same he looks area, young as shit. You guys look seven. like 30 years old, even though you're probably a little older. 25, <laughs> baby. Let's go. Yeah, he does incredible work as a, you know, music mogul, but also he stayed very connected to the community. Um, and so I just, I've always wanted to sit down and talk to him. I love Pharrell, dude. I so hopefully he'll listen to this podcast and Pharrell, if so, hit me up. We're going to tag him on, we're going to tag him, baby. Things, social media. We're going to tag him on the, on the, on the Twitter, baby. We're going to tag him on the Twitter. And uh, I'm hoping I'm a little fly on that, on that cauliflower wall right there. Cause I would love to hear what Pharrell has to say. I always love how he talks. I love his vibe and I love his music, man. So shout out to my new Pharrell. I love it. Um, and then getting into you and getting into the movement and getting into, into everything else, where is the best place for to people to learn more about it? more about you. Um, I know you have a website. I know you have the, the, uh, the website about also about the do good work. Uh, I think it is do good work, LLC.org, I believe as well. Is that correct? That's right. That's correct. So and then give your, give your website folks, a plug too. I want people to go there too, as well. I appreciate that. So, um, you know, I would say if you wanted to know more about me and you wanted to, uh, follow up, 
one, I'm excited. And this fall, well, I guess today, um, I start as professor of higher education, women, genders, and sexuality studies at Illinois State University. So wow. big shout out to the Redbird uh, Nation and crew. Hopefully they're listening and I'll tag them too in the post. Let's go. Um, really excited. Lots of wonderful opportunities there. But also you can find out more at my website, www.terrell, T-E-R-R-E-L-L, strayhorn.com. Um, And then I also own a consulting firm and the team and I have been working with hundreds of colleges and universities across the campus over years. So that is www.dogoodworkllc.org. And you can follow us on social media. TL Strayhorn is me. And then at do good work on Instagram and Twitter. Bro, I just appreciate your life, your soul, your energy. Uh, The fact that you never give up is what I always say every day. Just do you is uh, I tell kids all this time. It's like the, the Nike logo says, just uh, uh, just do it. It's just do you, even though that sounds selfish, the more you focus a little bit on you every day, the more, like I said, I believe the world gets bigger, better. It's not selfish to read a book. It's not selfish to spend a little extra time to meditate or uh, whatever that is for you, exercise, go for a walk, whatever that is. Sometimes it's a sacrifice. Sometimes it sucks to do the hard work, but the outcome is incredible. And that's what you've created for yourself in your life. And I love that you are helping change the universe through the education system, brother, because we need it, man. We need people like you that are helping do it. I always think about this and I talk to my sister who's very passionate about all different uh, points of view and, and passionate about topics um, from LGBTQ to everything. And, and uh, no one thing is so hard to just magically put your wand on and you just wish you could just go, hey, boom, let's just cure that. Let's just boom, let's just cure that. And it's just not. It's through people like yourself that are putting in that effort that do the work like you're doing through the, the organization, do the work through your, like you're doing through your every effort in your uh, educating as well. And then also through your writing, man. So keep well, going, I'm baby. Firm believer, firm believer in reciprocity. So let me say this as we close that, you know, thank you too for creating spaces like the Be Real Show. And you mentioned LGBTQIA+. I mean, we just came out of Pride Month. I've done a lot of research on LGBTQIA+, people of color in education right. who also face all sorts of challenges, both as faculty, staff, and students. And so um, to anyone in the listening audience who needs to hear it, listen, you matter, you belong, your life is important, keep thriving, um, do good work. But to you, our brother, Travis, thank you for creating spaces where we can come and be real and talk about important issues. It's been my pleasure. Oh my dude. Let's go! I really appreciate you. And like I said, you are the, the focus is helping change this world, the light, the beacon that we need every single day. And you're doing it in a big way, in, in a big problem. Education, baby. So let's go, folks. You've been hanging out with Mr. Dr. Terrell Strayhorn and Travis Tutal and Huff. We want to thank you again for your time today. And let's keep being real. What another epic episode and uh if you enjoyed the episode today can you please do me a favor and subscribe to our podcast the be real show on itunes or your favorite podcast platform and also take a little time today if you don't mind and give your boy t huff a review i would really super appreciate it and thank you so much for listening today do you want to get featured on podcast guys you can be a guest and that's right you have a story and the people uh, the good folks at i love podcast that's i l u v podcast.com do that every single day this is a new company guys in the space of podcast agency and they realize a lot of the people in the the space are just it's just a commodity and it does, they don't care and these folks care and I literally love Kenny and the team at I Love Podcast, and they are doing it right for their customers. So you guys can be a guest on a show. I love podcast.com. That's I L U V podcast.com. Let's go.